Hey, you know those annoying robocalls that you get saying you're pre-approved for credit cards or loans? Be careful. They could be scammers trying to steal your home's title. Here's the problem. Your home's title and mortgage records are online. And when a data breach happens, just like it recently did, millions of home titles and mortgages are exposed to thieves. And that's when the risk of home title fraud skyrockets. And here's how they do it. They forge documents stating you sold your home, listing themselves as the new owner. Then they'll take out loans against your home and stick you with the payments. Yes, this really happens. And there's no insurance, bank, or identity theft program that's going to protect you. For pennies a day, Home Title Lock puts a barrier around your home's online title. If you're getting credit card or loan robocalls or mail, Home Title Lock will get you through this period with 60 risk-free days of protection. Register your address now to verify you're not already a victim and protect your home's title. Go to HomeTitleLock.com. That's HomeTitleLock.com. It is party time, Mom. We are back. Studio 22, The Chad Prather Show. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. If you're watching it on Facebook, I want you to jump over to YouTube. Go to my YouTube channel, Chad Prather. Very simple. Just go search it out. And watch it over there so we can get the analytics and make sure that the, the numbers count. Because we're capitalists and we like to sell things and make money and make our sponsors happy. And uh, if you want to go where podcasts are offered, you can get it anywhere. Apple Podcasts, uh, Android, Stitcher, all, SoundCloud, all these different places you can go. We appreciate you listening to the podcast and telling your friends about it. And go over to Apple Podcasts and leave a rating. We only accept five-star ratings because we're winners, and that's what we do. We don't accept one-stars. That's absolutely ludicrous in our world. We don't believe in it, and we've never had a one-star rating. And if, and if you do that, we will hunt you down. I will send Graham Allen to your house. Now, now ladies are going to go and start putting one-star deals on there in the hopes that Graham Allen's going to come to their house. In the studio today, hanging out with the puppet master himself, the man at the helm of this starship called Studio 22, the puppet master, Mark, sitting over there. What's How's going, going on, my brother? Not too much. Just Have you done anything exciting ever in your life? I have, actually, yeah. <laughs> Lots of exciting things. <laughs> Lots of stuff. Lots of them, yeah. That's funny. I never hear about them. Candice, the queen of the Ethiopians sitting over there. She is the light of my life. How are you, darling? (laughs) Good. How are you? I am doing fantastic. You look great. Thank you. Cute as always. Everybody's got their headphones on because we got a Skype guest I'm going to introduce to you here in a minute. Over in the peanut gallery, we got Hot News Natalie looking good in the PFAF shirt. The party foul line's coming along, man. I, I can't wait till you see some of the things we got in store for people. Uh, party foul Steve, who is the genius, the man with the plan, and of course our buddy musician, Texas legend Steve Helms is sitting in there. We got a we got a studio audience here. I mean, we got a, we got a crew in Studio Twenty Two having a good time. And the reason they're here is because I got a very special guest that I'm excited to talk to, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Tony Minetti. Now, Tony, let's bring him on here. He's on Skype. Tony, how you doing, brother? I'm doing great, brother. Thanks for the call. It's good to see you. I wish you could see me because I'm pretty. Um, <laughs> and that's that's the thing about Skype, man. You look good. You look good. Former U.S. Like Senate you. candidate, Lieutenant Colonel Manetti. You you spent a quarter of a century in the Air Force. When you and I, before we got started, you went to the Air Force Academy. I was just there this week. Beautiful place. Yeah, it was my privilege and honor to uh, go to the Academy. There's a great story behind how I got there. But bottom line, it took a lot of hard work and determination. Earned this ring and... Uh, you know, it's just like you don't go to Walmart to get your wings. You have to earn them. Same deal with the Academy. <laughs> but they really molded me and other men and women to serve our country. And, and, and it's all based on integrity and service before self. It was my privilege and honor. I'd do it again. As a matter of fact, Chad, it was seven years ago today that I stepped out of this bad boy, my B2 stealth, nice. for the last time, got hosed down and retired for the second time, actually. And uh, it's hard to believe that it was seven years ago just today that i retired and it was my privilege and honor to serve our country as a b2 stealth pilot yeah that's awesome dude that's a great testimony and we certainly appreciate that service and i was out there uh with dan rooney and major dan rooney and the folds of honor crew out there john nemechek buoy frost i was i was buoy actually picked me up from my hotel and took me out for the benefit the other day with folds of honor and we were looking i was i was like my gosh there are this is has to be the most crowded airspace in america with everybody with the gliders and the twin props and people parachuting and they're all on the same path. <laughs> I'm like, and these are kids in these airplanes. <laughs> yeah, well, they do a good job preparing you. But I got to tell you that it's nothing like the men and women serving on the ground. 
my Army brothers and sisters, Marines, you guys put your life up, boots on the ground, and I have the utmost respect for uh, my Vietnam vets and, and for the airmen, my Tuskegee airmen are my heroes. Uh, those men and women that served our country when they were discriminated against, that's where the, that's where the, the good stuff sat. They had the right stuff. So anyhow, we're lucky to have served this great nation. What we need is more patriots in Congress instead of these, you know, ladder climbing politicians and that's why i ran for the u.s senate yeah i agree with you on that what do you think about some of these first term freshman uh, congressmen that are getting all this attention your omars your talibs your of course aoc and all of them what, what are your thoughts on this why why so much attention on freshman congresspersons well i'll tell you why because they've got a message and it's a loud message and it's a beautiful one and we should put a megaphone and amplify it <laughs> because they're literally leading the democratic party off you know off the trains off the track um and what are they looking for they're trying to share their message of what socialism uh, what i actually saw today just ripped my heart out when you hear a congresswoman informing illegals that there's going to be an ice raid so it gives them a heads up. I'm like, what the heck's going on? And I got to tell you that what, it makes me sick to think that that I'm not your not your United States senator. Because if I was your U.S. senator, you would have heard of a conservative voice fighting for Trump's America First vision. And unfortunately, what we have are these ladder climbing politicians. And my message is simple: get rid of these guys. I've been sharing uh, from day one. We got to change Mitch. These yeah. poster child po career politicians have been messing up our country and we need patriots who will stand up for liberty. And, and I'm actually glad that they're the, the AOCs are out there so that people like you and I that are listening are saying we cannot tolerate this anymore. We got to get good men and women that are willing to stand up for our Constitution in Congress. And it has come off the rails, I mean, in a big way. You know, I look at these candidates that are running for president on the Democratic side, and it's just a hodgepodge of idiocy, honestly. I look at this thing, nobody has any fresh ideas. you got a guy like Joe Biden who's been in Washington, D.C. for 50 years, and now he says he's going to change things? This is ridiculous. It is, it's just who can outleft one another. Don't you think that's the way it's going? Oh, you, you know, in the Air Force, we say boat top, baby, bombs on target on time. That's what I did. I was a bomber pilot. You hit the nail on the head, my brother. Here's what's going on. We finally have a president that hears our voice, that has common sense, that wants less government, less tax, strong defense. And we finally have a president that wants to make America great again. And now we're going to help him keep it great by electing him for another four years. But we need to help our president because I, I ask that everyone listening, please, Pray for our president and help, you know, his message so he can get reelected because he's a good man. And uh, I just am so thankful that there's leaders like him that are willing to give up their careers, their millions in order to serve you and I. Yeah, I've done enough of these shows and I know the comments that come on, especially when people are watching it live on social media, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, whatever, and they hear you make a comment and say that, that the president is a good man. I agree with you, actually. Uh, he's not a perfect man. Uh, he's a flawed character. But, you know, the thing that frustrates me is you're a person of faith. I'm a person of faith. You know, I have Christian values. You do as well. And, I, and I'm looking at this thing and I'm going, we, we weren't trying to elect a pastor. We, we, that wasn't the goal mm -hmm. here. You know, no person is, it, no man is perfect in that regard. I'm not looking at my sons and, and, and saying, I want you to spend the rest of your life being just like Donald Trump. But he does love this country. I mean, I can't name anything that he's done that is, hasn't been pro-America. Uh, you know, again, uh, here's what we got. We didn't we didn't elect a pope. I didn't <laughs> run to become a, a pastor or a priest. I ran to defend the Constitution and help our great nation. Same with the president. We know what we got with the president. And sure, there are things that we wish he wouldn't say or do. But you know what? Who am I to tell the president of the United States it ain't working? Because he did, after all, um, you know, bring a surprise when he uh, won against Hillary, who should be in jail right now. I. I my biggest thing that I'm, I, I'm really upset about, and I got to be honest with you, Chad, is, is that as a B-2 stealth pilot, if I decided to take my secrets home and do a private email, and then when I thought I was going to be investigated, I destroyed the evidence by putting acid and destroying it and throwing it away, I'd be in jail right now. You know that, and so do, not, so do I. So how is it possible that our former first lady you know, and secretary of state had is still free right now and not dealing with the truth? And the truth is... What she did was criminal, and we as a nation need to stop these collusion theories and go after the truth. And that's what I'm hoping that people like myself and yourself will, 
will demand that Lady Justice not cry anymore and do what's right for America. It's almost like so many of these these people get almost a free pass. It's like they choose to look the other way. You're right. It would if I were to do that. If you were to do that, we would we'd be in jail. People have gone to jail for far less in that regard. Do you think justice? I mean, let's let's look into the future. Do you think justice ever actually comes in that situation, or are we just not if we? No, I, I think you're right. Not if we keep electing these bozos into Congress. That's right, bozos. What we have is, you see, I've never ran as a politician. When I almost died, when I ran my business, when I did the things I did, I didn't do it with the sense of, oh, I can't wait to become a senator someday. I did it because I love my country and I was tired of what I was seeing there. But you see, I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen that are listening, I had to quit my job, my state job, while the attorney general could keep his state job. Why do I mention this? It's not about me. It's about something bigger I'm about to bring up. What happens is they don't want guys like you and I running for office because we would actually get stuff done. What they want are people they can control and the people that they can give money to. So there will not be justice in this country as we continue to elect these career politicians that do nothing for us. Instead, we will have this continuous conversation of what's wrong when we should be talking about what's great about America. And that's why I'm encouraging people that are listening, please. Do your part to help combat veterans that are running for Congress. And it's, uh, whether I run or not in the future, I doubt it. I'll be honest with you because I'm sick and tired of what I saw. I, what you see is what you get with me. I'm not a politician nor a career uh, candidate. I just love my country. So if you're listening, you want justice, change the culture in D.C. by electing combat veterans, ideally, and patriots. If you, We don't need more lawyers. What we need are more veterans and more uh, business people in, in office. No, I agree with you. I love your accent, Tony. It sounds like you're going to put a hit on somebody. It's fantastic. <laughs> I'm Tony from Montet- Montgomery, Alabama. That's what the accent is. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. You know, my mom and dad were, were legal immigrants. My mother's to say, and my dad's from Rome. They met at a dance, fell in love, and a year later I was born. And uh, so I was born in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, I love uh, the city, but... When I came out here with the B-2s in 94, I ended up calling Missouri my home. So, uh, you know, I was born born a New Yorker, uh, but I'm a Missourian by choice now. I love the heartland. I understand. I was born in New Jersey. I'm sure you can tell by the accent. I spent a lot of time there, South South <laughs> Jersey. Yeah, um, uh, it just happened to be where my mother was when she went into labor and had me. So I grew up, oh. in, I, I grew up in Georgia, and now I'm a Texan by choice and love it. Uh, center of the universe. Oh, I love Texas. Hey, I was I'm stationed curious. in Abilene at flying B-1 bombers. It was a lot of fun. I want to ask you about that because because I'm I'm always curious. You know, I, like I said, I was out with all of these uh, these fighter pilots, these colonels and lieutenant colonels with uh, wings of honor, uh, folds of honor. I'm sorry, uh, out in Colorado Springs just this past week and I had a blast with those guys. I love asking them about. I have all these jet fighter friends. I have all these pilot friends, right? I'm fascinated yeah. by aviation in that it just it just blows my mind the technology and how that's come. You take the B2 or the B1, like how is that to fly? How difficult? Because you know, you're looking at this odd-shaped aircraft. How is that to fly? Ah, uh, man, uh, it, it's it's almost like flying a bird in the sense that the B2 is an unusual aircraft and it has no tail. Here, yeah. for those of you that are actually looking here, no tail. So whenever I would air fuel and they would say, what's your tail number? I'd say, I'm sorry, we don't have a tail. But my aircraft number is. <laughs> my awesome. point is, it's it's unbelievable the way we designed this aircraft. Uh, there's no tail. It has the engines embedded in the aircraft. It gives you range, payload, precision weapon capability to put bombs on target anytime, anywhere in the nation with our precision weapons. And what it's like is, is you have about 10 televisions in front of you, believe it or not. And all I'm doing is managing systems, communication systems, and weapons integration, and, and finding out what the target is, and, and then being able to put the cursor on the target, and then designate and letting the bombs fly. I tell you what, it's, it's unbelievable how, how great it is to fly, but it also takes a lot of uh, skill, to be honest with you. The air refueling is extremely challenging. We'll get to about 15 feet behind another airplane wow. and try to stay stable, and because it's so aerodynamic whenever you pull the power most aircraft will dive down to maintain airspeed but not to be too it'll pitch up so you got to be careful you don't hit the other airplane so you know flying super Saturn never got old i got a chance to fly a mig 29 in hungary and f-16 in italy and 
uh, flying the B1 supersonic, going faster than that sound, you know. It's a privilege and an honor, uh, and it's just a testament to our great nation where we, we give our airmen uh, and the best equipment in the world to defend us. We were talking, we had a guest on, he's a World War II historian uh, here recently, Jeff Copsetta, and, and we were talking about in World War II how when Pearl Harbor was bombed, we went from being 17th in the world in military might to 1945, we were number one. And it is amazing how America has pulled together. That's the thing, when I hear a phrase like, make America great again, I, the, the president's not saying we're going to go back to a day of Jim Crow laws or segregation or colored water fountains and white water fountains and bad. That's not. He's talking about where we're respected in the world, where where you look at our military might and you and we're not just a bully on the block. Because the beautiful thing sure. you talk about flying a bomber and and putting a cursor and, and releasing you know a payload and target. We're we're one of those countries that not only do we blow you up, we'll help you rebuild it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, that's a great point. You know, I was literally having a conversation with my wife about that. What makes America great? It's that we're not socialists. We're not communists. And for all you left wing progressive liberals out there that want health care for all, free college, free everything, you lose sight of what made this country great. It was hard work. It was earning a living. It's why my parents came here. What America does is exactly what you just said. Look at our history, our rich history. After World War II, rather than, you know, take over Japan and Germany, we helped build their eco economics up and mirrored them with a democracy model that is centered upon capitalism rather than socialism as its theory. And what's capitalism? It's about the rugged individual working hard, earning your money, not getting everything for free. So, yes, I think what's great about this country is that we have freedom. It's our founding fathers and who they were. And that's why I always go back to, let's never forget where we came from. We should honor that past. When I hear people wanting to take George Washington and Jefferson statues down, it just I just go, are you kidding me? Yeah. What are we talking about, man? This is our history. We should be proud of our history and learn from it. And don't forget the Civil War. It was a Republican president that took a stand against slavery. You know, we, we have a history, whether we like it or not, it happened in the past. We shouldn't destroy statues. We should honor them and then look for our bright future. Yeah, we were having that conversation the other day at my house with some friends. And somebody, it was prior to the 4th of July Independence Day, and, and someone asked me, they said, do you think there'll be a bunch of demonstrations of flag burning and things like that? And I said, yes, but... That's not even a major deal anymore because they've gone far beyond desecrating a, an American flag. Now they want to desecrate the Constitution. Now they want to get rid of the Electoral College. Now it's a war of ideologies. Now they want to desecrate capitalism and desecrate uh, freedom and liberty and, and equality of opportunity. And, and they want to desecrate the borders and they want to desecrate legal immigration like your parents. You know what I'm saying? They, like your parents, they did yes. something major. In, in their life to immigrate from Rome and Sicily and come to America and establish themselves as American citizens. To just be a Cory Booker that goes down and walks five illegals across the border like that is a slap in the face to people who have done it the right way. It's not only a slap in the face, which you are 100 percent correct. It's an affront to you and I. We are a nation of rules. And when you see our senators and congressmen and women actually encouraging illegal immigration, giving them a heads up of an ICE raid. I just think to myself, what is going on with this country? Has the, what is the strategy of the left and the progressives? It's only one thing. They know they can't beat President Trump on ideas, on less regulation, on economics and strong military. So what do they got? The only thing they got, this is their strategy, is to try to appease the people that are coming in illegally, that are growing in populations, and then they in turn will vote Democratic. That's their long-term strategy. You and I both know it. So what we have to do is reach out. First of all, I am for merit-based immigration. We need to change that process, but we cannot encourage illegal immigration. We must enforce our laws. So when you have these senators like Booker, like you said, and AOC doing what they're doing, we must stand up against them and say, no, that's wrong. And your job when you took an oath to defend the Constitution was not to circumvent the laws of America. It's to enforce them. 
And that's why we need a, a great president like Trump to do that. I'm going to make a comment, and I want your thoughts on it. Mm -hmm. If, with the direction the, the country's going, the way things are, with the mainstream media bias, with social media the way it is, with this outrage culture, victim culture, if Trump does not get elected in 2020, probably the last Republican president we see for a long, long time. What do you think? Okay, uh, you never know, so I, I will give you that. But here's what I think we should do. I did five years as an assistant dean at a university in Missouri. I reached out to young men and women and shared with them these core values and the importance of what I think is central to who we are as a nation. And if we don't reach out and share with others the importance of our values of freedom, of our Constitution, of our Second Amendment. If we don't do so, we may lose the, the war, if you will, on ideology. So I have hope, Chad, and everyone listening. For example, have you heard about the truth? There's this new guy. He was a liberal uh, Democrat, and now he's coming up with a show, and he's like going up against the left-leaning media that is no longer the media, but he's exposing the truth, like yeah what happened with collusion. It's all a bunch of lies. So I am hopeful that there's going to be men like you, Chad, that are going to have that voice that touches the people, especially the younger generation, to share with them the truth of who we are as a nation and our history. So my, my hope is that other men and women will help our president become elected again so we can have four more years to solidify the America First agenda and more importantly to encourage men and women that are not politicians to get involved and run and, uh, you know, to serve our country. I was against these 20 year politicians. I said I would only serve 12 years maximum. That's what we need to do. You know, we need to change that culture and have that dialogue with the young generation. You know what they value, Chad? They value the environment. They do. They value the importance of education. And there's other things that they value maybe that we don't care as much of, but we have to listen to them. And that's my hope that you know, we'll do to have that conversation. I agree with you. And I know that there's a lot of people who come to me and they say, oh, we don't, we don't like it when you don't get into politics so much. And I'm like, yeah, look, that, I'm not, I'm one of those guys, I refuse to keep my head stuck in the sand. I've got to speak out on these things that are my convictions because a nation is at stake. And I'm glad you brought up the next generation because it's one thing to raise our kids with certain values. And then, as you mentioned, being a dean at a college or university setting, we're sending our kids off to these indoctrination camps called college, yes. and and we're we're spending a lot of money to fund an ideology that we spent 18 years trying to sh bring our kids away from. It's absolute insanity. But the hope is in the next generation. And, and that's exactly the point. Look, what what the enemy, if you will, has done. What are they trying to do? They're trying to water down the Constitution. They're trying to elect these people that are against our laws. Literally, uh, they want to take our guns away. Okay, I'm from the Midwest. Uh, I always used to say if I could issue a B2, I would when I was running. Why? <laughs> because I'm a strong defender of the Second Amendment because I've been to countries where there's these communist nations or rogue you know, aristocratic governments that take away your rights to free speech or religion. So we have to share our rich history with our younger generation and reach out to them as the party or, or the conservatives that have a vision but are also listening. That's the biggest thing I learned as a dean, to shut up yeah. and to listen to your constituents and to your students and to serve them, not you. Yeah. And that's why I'm hoping that you know there's, there's shows like yours that will, we could agree to disagree, but let's have that dialogue and bring people that uh, have that opposing point of view to listen to them. Yeah, and that's one of the things is our country's built on debate and dialogue, and these days people can't do it anymore. It becomes vitriolic. It becomes, it becomes you know, people want to get into the whole up yours and kiss my eyes, and, and it, it's, 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 a, it's a blood fest. Yeah, and it's this political correctness gone amok. Yeah. You know, uh, did, you, did you hear about the coach uh, yesterday, the hockey coach that yeah. says, if you kneel, you're out of here, you know, <laughs> you're not going to be on my team. That's that's what we needed from the NFL with Kaepernick. That's what we needed Raponi when she was kneeled down and not put her hand on her heart. 
representing the United States. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Come on, man. The coach should have taken her off the team so fast it wasn't even funny. But instead, what we have is people being politically correct and diverse and the unity thing. When instead, what we should do is say, yeah, you can have that, but not representing the United States. Yeah. Or you're not going to get paid on the team. You see, we need people like you and I to stand up and say, no, that's not right. But instead, we have people that are politically correct and afraid to speak their mind. Oh, except for one guy, President Trump. That's right. Yeah, that's exactly right. I'll tell you, man. I <laughs> And I do wish you could in- issue me one of those B2s. I, uh, ah. I, you know, people ask me all the time, well, oh, you're a 2A two two a guy. What do you need? A, you think you need a rocket launcher? Well, yeah. I mean, if they're giving them away or selling them, I, by God, I promise you I'd have one. <laughs> Hope I'd never have to use it, but I'd have one. Hot News Natalie sitting over there in the peanut gallery. I, I can see your, your brain's itching over there. You're twisting. Hang on a second. Let me, let's, let's chime in here. Well, thank you very much. You guys are actually handling it. I've had two questions, and he's answered them, so there's been no reason for me to speak up. However, I will say something that I appreciated that you just said was being able to listen to our younger generation because I think a younger generation always gets um, put in the – Everybody gets a trophy, and I'm not going to listen to you, and I'm going to pout, and and you and sh- just walk away and throw a fit. But you see that in all ages. I mean, when you were talking about a lack of ability to converse, they they talk about the view that show being able to do that, but that is not the case at all. That's just, that to me is a bunch of women who are throwing fits and walking away if you're not hearing what they're saying. Whoopi Goldberg, who I love as an actress, is a perfect example of that. That there there is no more communication. To agree to disagree, and I think that's sad. So while the, you know a younger generation gets, you know, uh, pointed the finger at, I would say that that's an all generation. And until we can have people in the media help have a little bit more compassion for each other, we we've got big problems here because that's who everybody's listening to, whether we like it or not. Yeah, Colonel, we're getting uh, invaded with, with it, we're inundated with crazy ideas, aren't we? Mm-hmm. Well, I you know to me. I, I love I love the opportunity to, to serve as your dean, but I also ran a restaurant for 15 years, uh, uh, and I just you know a couple of years ago I got out of the restaurant business. Greek food, right? It was Greek food. I'm, I'm sure it was Greek yeah. food, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got it, man. No, it was it was New York style pizza and Italian food. It was nice. all, you ever hear of Sabaros? Oh yeah, Sabaros. Yeah, I used to work with Mr. Sabaro when he had one restaurant, and he taught me the restaurant business. But and I could I wish I could share stories about integrity and the mop and the floors. There's so many stories. I don't know how much time you got. But anyhow, getting back to what Natalie was just saying, here's what I learned being a restaurant owner because I used to hire a lot of young people, being you know busboys or you know uh, s- servers. They crave strong leaders that love them and take care of them. I know that sounds weird, but that's exactly what they crave. So when I would hire young men and women. I would share with them our core values and simplify the message of who we are. Make believe they're coming over to my house for dinner. Take good care of them, whatever they want. You know, if they treat you with disrespect, let me know about it and I'll take care of it. And then I would do the dishes and I would be an example to them and say, look, and they would say, Mr. Minetti, why are you cleaning the dishes? I said, I won't do any job that I wouldn't ask you to do. And the second reason I did is I want to throw, why are they throwing out the big ziti instead of, you know, eating it and taking it home? <laughs> Anyhow, my point is the young people. They really do look up to people that have integrity and that care about them. And all we have to do is listen to them. They have different ideas. Fine. But let's share those ideas. I encourage everyone listening to reach out to this younger generation because they will be our generation when we're older, if you will. And they are good people. They really are. And they've got some great ideas. The biggest challenge they have is that they're connected to this iPhone instead of talking to other people. Yeah. So if you're young and you're listening, I encourage you to use some of your God-given skills to go out there and meet people. When I was younger, we would go out and play ball and, and meet people. And I know I sound like an old man right now, but the truth is I'm encouraging you to go out there and, and you know, socialize a little more. Yeah. Colonel, I can't agree with you more, honestly. I mean, I really appreciate it. And I'm encouraging, I'm right now I'm going to encourage everybody, everybody that's listening or watching this podcast right now, make sure this is an episode you got to share. You got to share it with your kids. You got to share it with your teenagers. You got to share it with your young adults, share it with your families, your friends. Because I'm telling you, I I think millennials, let's talk about millennials. They're the butt of a lot of jokes, but I think they get a bad rap, okay? Uh, yes, they have their things about them that, you know, all generations have their tendencies. Generation Z, as it's called, you know, these kids these days, I got a lot of hope for them, a lot of hope for them because they, they're coming back with, 
you know, they can see through the smoke and mirrors of the left uh, and, and how radical it's gotten. But I want to point out something because, because this isn't just theory when it comes to Tony Minetti. First of all, he mentioned assistant dean of aviation at Central Missouri, University of Central Missouri. That program, when you were there, grew by 35%. It became profitable for the first time in 50 years. You, you put your money where your mouth is, so to speak. This is something you do it. You did this. And you ensured that graduates had jobs. You encouraged students to look at, you know, the Tuskegee Airmen, for example. And, 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 you know, you built a strong relationship with these people. You've got, of course, your nonprofit organization, your big, big, big brothers, big sisters of Johnson County, Missouri. You're doing the stuff when it comes to the next generation, aren't you? Yeah. And, and you know, I, I appreciate you bringing that stuff up. I think one of the things that I'll share with you that the young people are passionate about is the environment. And I'll share the story briefly. There were young people that were upset about a local lake here. So I, they asked me to go to the city council to try to fight to get more money and taxes. And instead, I shocked them. And you know what I did? I stood in front of the council and I said, look, Lions Lake is disgusting. But rather than us asking you, the government, to do something about it, I'd like to form the Lions Lake Initiative and ask young people across our great city and older people, and I don't care who you are, to let's raise money through fundraisers and let's make fundraisers and let's clean the lake. Yeah. And we literally, over the next year, raised thousands and thousands of dollars. And if you were to see Lions Lake right now, it used to be this green thing that you could practically walk upon. And it's beautiful and there's people fishing. You know, look, the young people had a vision of the environment. And what we need to do is say, you know, you're probably right. We can do something about it. And rather than having more government doing something about it, how about we empower you, the young people, to do something about it? Everyone listening, this is how we can connect with the, the next generation, is get them involved in serving others over self about something they're passionate about. Yeah. You know, and so it was – I didn't do it for any other reason because, but because I love people. And, and to me, it's a privilege and honor to, to lead others, if you will. And the number one key is trust. And if they trust you and they know you got their back and it's not about you, it's about serving others over yourself, then everything's a beautiful thing. You with me? Yeah, I agree with you. And, I, and you bring up a good point because I think, okay, you know, to play somewhat of a devil's advocate here, here's, here's what happens. Most of us as adults or who have kids and have experienced a little bit of life, we hear these ideas like, Young people want to, you know, help the environment. We, and we immediately scoff at that. We're like, oh, you're one of these climate change, you know, you're blah, blah, blah. The world's going to end in 12 years, according to AOC. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with wanting to take care of the planet. I mean, the Bible says that, that, that you should, you know, that, that, that you're entrusted with creation as a good steward. So uh, why not? Why not get them focused on something that they're passionate about and let them go to it? You got it, brother. That's exactly it. You know, I, my favorite motivational speaker is Cleve McCleary. He's a Vietnam vet. And I happen to be an author of a couple of books, Christian books mainly, Call to Serve, Honor to Serve. And basically, I would go out there and listen to people, but Cleve was my favorite. And he would always say, there are two types of fools in this world, fools for Jesus and fools for everybody else. And you just got to ask yourself, who's fool of you? I am unashamed in sharing my faith, although I'm not running for clergy, that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And as a result, he has shared with me the importance of loving others over self, right? That should be our mandate as, as Christians if we're brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, where we blur the lines is when we start now saying, well, if you don't do this and that, and then we get politics involved. Oh, the heck with that. I'm not there. I'm instead encouraging people that are listening to live in your faith, whether you're Jew or Muslim or Christian. If we would do more of what that scripture says— rather than have debates about ideology, then I think we'd be better off as a country and as a nation. And that is what made America great, if you ask me, our Judeo-Christian heritage. And it was the fact that we loved God and we believed that God blessed America. Now we have people that are not even reciting the Pledge of Allegiance before a city council meeting. We have people that say, you can't say in God we trust it, taking it off the Congress. What are we doing, America? We can't stand by and just say it's just the way it is. Now, I'm not saying to fight. I'm not in any way saying to do anything that it cause violence. But we must stand up for our values and truth or we will lose this great country. Uh, man, I, I, you know, I, I'm just so thankful, Chad, for the opportunity to briefly share. Uh, it, it's a passion of mine because I love this country. 
Yeah. And I hate to see these Mickey Mouse bozos destroying it. We got to change Mitch. We got to change all of these people that have been there for 30 years. Forget the Bidens of the world. Let's instead help people that are patriots serve our great nation. I agree with you. And, you know, it is a fight and it's OK to be spunky in that fight. You know, you, yeah, you turn the other cheek, but it, but that doesn't mean you don't fight back. I mean, you know, I, I, Jesus said, I didn't come to bring you peace, but a sword. I mean, there, 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 you know, there's a kingdom involved here and our American churches. I've been saying for 25 years American churches have got to stop worrying about if the coffee's hot enough for the right flavor in the lobby of the church before they go in, and let's get back to doing the business of this kingdom thing, because if we don't, yes. we've become impotent. And this idea of pluralism, you know, I've also said for a long, long time, this idea of pluralism, that every idea is equally valid, this idea that, you know, there's no absolutes except for, you know, there's no absolute truth absolutely no absolutes and those kind of things. This is something that's led us down a path where we've laughed at these ideas, we've laundered these ideas, we've made them palatable, and like you said, we get to the point where we say, well, it's just the way it is. It's not. It's not. The status quo, you know, we love to, we love to you know, quo about the status quo when the status ain't no, nothing to quo about. You know what I'm saying? It gets to it gets problematic. And, and, and that's exactly why I always go back to where we came from as a country. George Washington is my favorite American his, you know, a historian and, and leader, just a person that stood up and, and almost died in battles. And then instead of being a king, he chose to be president and only served two terms. Yeah. You know, we need to go back to that. Don't forget our rich history. We stood for the Constitution. We said no to the British Empire. You're not going to tax us. You're not going to tell us I can't believe in God if I want to. And you're not going to take my guns away. We need to go back to where we came from. Yeah. And we should be proud of that. And you're so right. The left's argument is what? Let's give you free college reparations for slavery. Let's take away your history. Let's forget about the Constitution. Let's have socialism. That's the left. What is the conservatives instead? We need to embrace the Constitution and stand firm on the truth. And that's why I ran for the United States Senate. Uh, but, you know, it's not about me. I really believe I'm, I'm starting almost like a movement in the sense that there's a lot of people out there. That's when I, when I talked to Brian Kilmeade's show, I said, this isn't about Tony Manetti. You know, it, it's bigger than this, man. We need to reach out to people that are listening and encourage them to run for office and stand true to your values. Be respectful, have honor, be a statesman, but don't forget that you have truth on your side. Yeah, that's right. In the end, we win. America is, yeah. it, the hypocrisy, for instance, you know, America is the only country on the planet where uh, if, you, if you cheat to get into college, you go to jail, but if you cheat to get in the country, you get to go to college. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Chad, now we can't make this stuff up, right? No, you can't make it up. You, you literally, my, mother, my mother and father explained to me the process of becoming a citizen. They had to learn the language, the history. They prepped for the test. They were excited about it. But it wasn't just issued at Walmart. It was a process. They had to obey the law. Yeah. And for us to encourage people to just have open borders, all you open border people out there, I got nothing for you, and here's why. <laughs> Do you lock your doors at night? If not, why don't you just allow everybody to come in your house? You know, we're a country that has borders. And so I have no idea. I, now, that doesn't mean I won't listen to your argument. And if you can convince me otherwise, well, let's have that conversation. Yeah. But at the same time, I, I was all for, you know, when I ran for the Senate, check this out, Chad. I'll never forget. I went to St. Louis and I met with the Hispanic leaders because I was reaching out to everybody. You know, I didn't care. I don't care about your race or color. I just want to see how I can serve you. And I'll never forget the president of the organization was sitting at the head of the table. I won't share his name. I respect him. He's a good man. And the vice president and all his staff said, hey, this meeting should be a non-starter. He goes, I heard you speak that you want to build a wall and you should, you're not for this and that. And I just let him talk. And when he was done, I said, excuse me, sir, but you're wrong. I didn't want to build a wall. I want to build a wall 10 feet higher. <laughs> I go, because I'm sick and tired of people coming into my country and taking stuff, and I have to pay for their stuff when they're breaking my laws. If my parents were legal immigrants, but I will fight for Hispanics in my community that don't get a fair wage for a fair day's work. Yeah. I will fight for merit-based immigration. I will fight to get more uh, judges there to hear the cases. I will listen to what can they do? can we do to help you know, people that are in war and suppressed and see what we can do as a nation to help them. 
okay? But I don't want to just pe- have encourage people to come in my country illegally. Yeah. And the president, or- the guy started to talk, and the president of the organization said to him, quiet. He goes, I could deal with this man because at least he speaks the truth. And they asked me what I was doing for dinner, and we went out and had dinner, and we stood together for three, four hours. We became friends. When Sarah Palin came out and endorsed me, he was, he was there in the audience. I'll never forget him being there. Look, there's people out there that are listening. We need to stand up for our great nation and don't buy the, this myth of, of what the left is, is, is selling us. We are a great nation. We are already great, and, and we just need to keep it great by helping – Get leaders that will represent your values rather than just submit to what we currently have. Yeah, couldn't agree with you more. I was in New Brunswick, New Jersey a couple of weeks ago, and I was walking down the street, and I happened to come across this Lutheran church that called itself Open Borders Church. And it had a big banner out, and I walked over to the front door, and I tried to walk in, and guess what? The doors were locked. (laughs) (laughs) You you can't make this stuff up, man. I took a video of myself trying to open it up. (laughs) <laughs> Nuts. That's the way I respond a lot of time on Twitter. By the way, I have a website, TonyMinetti.com. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook if you want. At but Tony the bottom Minetti line is, check MO, this right? Out. Yeah. Yeah. What's funny is oh. that when people like that uh, speak up, I just say, look, hold on a second. You know, you, you, you want your cake and eat it too. You know what I mean? They, they want open borders, but they lock their church doors. Let's be yeah. for real here. Yeah. You know, so, uh, we can't. It's insanity. We we must prevent that from occurring. Yeah, and I said your Twitter handle wrong. I apologize. It's at Manetti for M-O. Uh, be sure yeah. to follow him on Twitter and go to TonyManetti.com. And grab his books. Check him out. You're a passionate dude, man. I appreciate that about you, Tony. I mean, you're a passionate dude. And I don't know. Like, like if you said tomorrow that you're running for Senate again, I'm behind you 100%. I, I, you, you'd be a good man. You're, you're, I mean, you I, know, everything's really in God's hands. Chad, but. but- it's, my heart's not in it right now, man. I hear you. I've had so many people ask me, Chad, and, and, and here's what I'm going to tell you. When the President of the United States came last year uh, for the VFW meeting, the VFW uh, leaders said, Tony, please don't politicize the event. So I didn't bring my MAGA truck. I had a big old <laughs> B2 with an American flag. I didn't come. I, I literally didn't show up because I, didn't, I wanted to respect the VFW over me. But when young Josh was on the stage, a ladder climbing politician who would never served this country in war, and he's at the VFW on the podium. That's when my heart sunk, and I said, "We're done." I gotta be honest with you. I was just so distraught yeah. that my president and my country would have a double standard where I have to quit my job in the state, but he can run as an attorney general, where he can go on the stage at the VFW, but he never served the war, and I fought in two wars and almost died, and I couldn't. What the heck's going on? So then I said to myself, "Am I really gonna run again?" My wife almost forget about it. You know, all the debt that I got, to tell you the truth, because I didn't take money from anybody. I didn't. T- I didn't never took a lot of money from these people that, you know what I mean? Uh, you do me a favor, I'll do you do me one when you're a senator. I can't be bought. I won't bend the knee to the RNC. I won't bend the knee to anybody except my people and the country that I, I'm proud of. And I know people want me to run. You have no idea how many people want me to run, but mm-hmm. I, you got to want to do it. And the only reason I would do it is if the president of the United States or, or if I had people that would raise up the money that would make me do it. Otherwise, I wouldn't I, I just won't waste anyone's time and energy and money. You got to want to do this. And maybe if anything, I'm going to encourage other people to help other uh, candidates. But I'll pray about it. Yeah, I hear you. I'm going to come to Missouri and hang out with you, Tony. I'm coming. We're gonna hang. We're buddies Sounds now, good. man. I, I'm in love with you, pal. I uh, well, I'll take you airborne. I'll get, I, you let's know, I'm, go. I'm a certified flight instructor. I'll take you in an airplane. We'll go flying and have a good time. Don't tempt me with a good time. Is there any good Italian food in that town? Well, forget about it. The best is in my house. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Tell Penny to cook us no, something. Yeah, up. I, is that sexist? Well, really Can I say that these Missouri days? Is our, is our barbecue? Yeah. Uh, but I could I could make a mean lasagna. My mother taught me. Oh my God! I love my mom. Mm. I, I, I take videos of her cooking and uh, because I want my kids to understand how to make, you know, some of these amazing dishes that you don't just do in a book. You know, she literally just uses her fingers and and as far as how much ingredients. And uh, I love my mom and dad. I'm so honored for them that and their example of hard work. I'll never forget my dad telling me never get involved with the mafia. Because because if you do him a favor and, and you do something for him, as I know there's a lot of people listening out there, this guy's Italian, he's from Brooklyn, he's, you know, bada boom, bada bing. Uh, <laughs> but my dad taught me, 
if you ever do that, they're going to own you for life. So, you know, always do the right thing. My son taught my, my sons. I have two of them. One went in the army. Uh, I, I share with them the importance of hard work and integrity, just like my mother and father did. That's the legacy thing. And that's what we have to do to our younger generation out there. So my, my encouragement to everyone listening is that what you do in your life does matter. Be a man and woman of purpose, whatever your faith is, spiritually, live it, because you never know in life. We're here one minute, gone the next, yeah. but life is beautiful, and we're lucky to live in America where we have these freedoms, where we can speak like this openly without worrying about who's coming through my front door. Are you with me? Yeah, I'm with you. So I'm going back to where we came from as a nation. Uh, I love this country, and it's my hope that people listening will not be ashamed of our history. And we'll stand up for the Jeffersons and, and, and for the Washingtons of the world that gave up their liberty in a lot of ways to, to make this country great. Yeah. Lieutenant Colonel Tony Manetti, if Bada Bing wasn't your call sign, then they, I'm ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> but you, want, you want to know what my call sign was? What was it? Mayor. Really? Yeah, because when I started Big Brothers and Sisters, I had a vision. I shared it and went out and raised all this money and... People would always interrupt us when we're eating with the pilots. And uh, one of the colonels said, this guy's like the mayor. Everybody knows him. And then that's it. That that's was my call sign. funny. <laughs> mayor Manetti. I love it, dude. I love it. Hey, thank you for the time. Thank you for the passion and integrity. Can I'm, I speak to his passion real quick? Yeah, please Something do. I just, I, I want to just echo that, um, how much I appreciate that. And one thing that I, I went up with my family to West Point this last year. We went to the Army Air Force football game. I love God, country, family, football, all that stuff. Army won. But anyway, um, <laughs> it was a great game. But the one thing that I really appreciated was that stadium is full of of a bunch of Minettis. Everybody is passionate. They love our country. They're ready, you know, they're ready to, to come together for a fun football game. But, boy, you get them out there, like you had mentioned, your Army buddies. It, there, there's just the, – the passion is unreal. And I never served. My husband served. I, I, I didn't do that. But just thank you for all that you've done because just to be in a stadium full of, uh, of a bunch of folks like you was a true honor. I, I really appreciate you, you sharing that. Um, it, the honor is all mine. I always say to God be the glory – and I mean that. You see, I almost died in battle in defense of this country. And, and when I almost died in that mission, I was 400 feet getting shot at, two engines shut down. And I remember kissing the ground. And I promised God that I would serve him. And uh, if you're asking where that passion comes from, it's from within. And it's, I give God the glory all the time. And I really want to encourage everyone listening. You have a purpose in this life. Whatever that passion is, use it to serve others over yourself because that is, you know, produces what I call my fifth core value, which is joy. I have six core values, integrity, excellence, service before self, relationship, joy, and safety always. So if you ever see me doing number five, baby, number five, you know what I'm talking about. So thank you for sharing that vision of the stadium. And there are so many people out there that are listening that maybe have lost hope. We shouldn't. The, the change begins with you and what you do with your life. And we'll never forget where we came from and remember that we live in the greatest country on the planet. I do want to thank Mr. James Clark for introducing you and I. He's a good man and there's a lot of people. I'm not doing a lot of shows, Chad. I, I did it because uh, I just felt led to do it. I'll be honest with you, man. Um, I may continue this dialogue with others in the future. Um, just right now, I just needed a little time off to, you know, rebuild. I, I had to get a job and rebuild financially and, and reconnect with my family. But if I ever decide to do anything, I'll, I promise I'll give you a call and maybe come back on your show. Please do, man. Love to have. We'd love to have you personally in studio. And uh, I'm serious about coming to visit, man. I'm gonna come hang out with you because I'm I'm fired up, and I know a lot of people listen to this. They're fired up too. And if you and if you've been inspired by what you're hearing Tony say, go to TonyMinetti.com. Follow him on Twitter, Minetti for Memo. Get out there, check him out, read his books, because the passion and integrity is real. And, Tony, I want to say thank you once again. I appreciate you, man. I want that lasagna so bad right now. I'm hungry. <laughs> and uh, give your wife our regards. And we're praying for you, man. We appreciate you coming on, dude. It means a lot. And we have we just have the best of the best guests, dude. You, you are just tremendous, bro. So thank you so much, Tony Minetti. Check him out. 
for Studio 22, for the crew that's here, the puppet master Mark Candice, the queen of the Ethiopians who has now stepped out. She's always on the go, Mark. She's always somewhere else. Gosh, she's got she's work to do. She acts like she's busy or something. Crazy. Party foul Steve, the legend, the Texas legend, Steve Helms, Hot News Natalie, and all the crew here for Tony Minetti in Studio 22. I'm Chad Prather. Thank you for watching. We love y'all. God bless. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.